Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to do a little bit of a part two, and I think this is probably going to be pretty quick, but a little bit of a part two to the support interfaces video we did a couple back, and I'll link it at the end. Uh, but it was around using multi-materials for support interfaces. So if you've got something that you've got to print like this and you need an area to support it, then we tested out like what are some good support interfaces, so interface settings, and maybe using multi-materials. Using different materials, so for instance, this is PLA and I use my support interface material here as PETG because they don't like to stick to each other. So it makes sense that that might be a very clean way to do it and we got good results. One of the artifacts I got though, if you can see up close there, is that little black line that runs through this. And that rightfully uh, pointed out by one of the comments on that past video was that, you know, for sure, right? It has to be, um, it's excess pet G that's been embedded inside the print. And it's probably not a bunch, but it's there. Um, probably need to purge a little bit more. Oh, and by the way, that part of your print's probably pretty weak. Not untrue. I haven't had a break or anything. It's not going to break with this particular print, but in other types of prints, it for sure could, right? They're dissimilar materials. They don't like to stick to each other. Makes sense that that part of the print's going to be weaker. So, um, I've put up a couple of example parts up here, and we're going to look specifically at flushing volume. So how can you improve the uh, not only the structural integrity of printing with multi-materials, but also the aesthetic quality of some of your prints if you're doing color changes? Uh, so if, over here on all of your filaments, so obviously this applies to like a, a, an AMS type of setup. Um, right here next to all of your prints just above is this flushing volume button that's got a nice uh, little simple interface that we can go after here and it's simple what are you going from and what are you going to right and so these numbers here represent your flushing volumes let me head a little recalculate here and so by default the numbers are all i don't know middle of the road maybe a little bit on the low end and this is to reduce the poop coming out of this thing right to reduce the amount of waste that the machine has um but, but print by print, you might want to change this a little bit, especially if you're going to dissimilar materials or drastically different colors and you want to avoid some color bleed from some hanging around on the nozzle. So very simple here. If you look at number two here, I've got my generic pet G. Everything else in here is PLA. I want to make sure that if I'm doing dissimilar materials again, that I have a structurally good part. I want to purge all of the pet G out of there before moving to another type of filament. So if you look at two, right? Two is my pet G and anything I go, um, uh, from number two to anything else, let's just, let's pick, um, this black PLA in this case, right? So if I'm going to go from white pet G to black PLA, my purge, uh, volume here is only 172, uh, or the flushing volume is only 172. I might want to bump this up to something more like 650. And I'm obviously going to test this and do a couple of the little, uh, different things, but I'm going to bump that up to make sure that I'm purging as much of that pet G out of the uh, nozzle as possible before it lays down anything else on the print. Um, same thing. If I'm going to go from, let's say anything, um, now if you want to go from, if you're going to drastically dissimilar colors, like if I'm going to go from this white PLA to this black PLA, I also might want to go ahead and bump that up to make sure I've got everything purged out. Uh, that I can't. Now you can see down here that there's uh, some guidance on ranges. So the minimum being 92. Um, and it, it, you know, if it's not the, the same type of material and then up to about 800 or so. Um, those, you got to test it. You got to check it. Like your printer's not my printer. We might all have the same A1, but you know, everything's a little bit different. So uh, filaments, different things like that. So there are variables that you will need to account for, uh, but this is a nice, simple, easy way to do it. Um, and again, like, so, you know, with, with a print like this, when you've got these flushing volumes set up properly, and in this example over here on the left, where we're looking at an interface material that is PET G, but a print that is PLA, right? I don't want the PET G to bleed into my PLA part. So I'm going to make sure those flushing volumes are set. Likewise, over here, this this part is all PLA, but I want to make sure that I'm not getting any color bleed that maybe goes on in between the eyes or around the nose. I want to make sure all that darker color is, is flushed out of the system and vice versa before it goes into the next one. So in this particular case, if I'm switching from black to white, uh, then I want to make sure that I'm going to go to this um, three to one, right? It's, it's already got a pretty decent, um, coverage set there. It's got some smarts built into it, which is kind of nice. I've already given me a big volume. Now, again, I might do a couple of test prints just to make sure and bump this up to even all the way up to 800 if I really need to, um, to make sure that I'm getting the, the, the color range that I'm expecting. 
So there you go. Quick tip for tonight. Super simple. Uh, if you haven't seen the button, haven't played with it, feel free. Please go do it. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll do another one pretty soon. Thanks a lot.